Welcome to The State of Us. Real people with honest opinions and the future of responsible media. Here's your host, Justin T. Weller. Young voters keep moving to the left on social issues, and that includes Republicans. That's according to a New York Times article on January 23rd. We know we're a little behind, but it seemed like a good opportunity to do it today. According to the study that the article discusses, which was based on an online survey, only 30% of Gen Z respondents said they approved of President Trump's performance. More than half believed humans were fueling climate change, and 70% said they wanted the government to do more to solve the nation's problems. Those views roughly mirror attitudes held by millennials, and together the two groups may add up to a powerful voting bloc at odds with Republican ideology, political scientists say. That's what we're taking on today, and why do you care? Well, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if they become the largest voting bloc, you're either part of it or you're going to be affected by it. There's not really another outcome. You know, either either you're in one of those groups, so you care because this is kind of about our future and the direction we're going, or you aren't in those groups, but those groups are going to be a large voting block, probably the majority voters for the foreseeable future. Uh, so it matters because they're going to determine the direction of the country and how political parties change. But of course, we couldn't begin this critical conversation without your friendly redneck liberal, Lance, Lance Jackson. Jackson. Um, I, you know, it's, I think it's interesting. I know that this is one of your, uh, things that you follow with these generation things. So I'm interested in seeing how this all plays out and, and, and what people have to say and how this is going to affect the country in the future. And just so everybody can keep it straight. Um, there are, we, we do have another guest today as well, and we'll introduce him now. Caleb Spinner has been our associate producer for a couple weeks, and today's his first opportunity to come on air with us. So welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's going to be a fun experience, I think. And our representation today in this order, which is also an order of age, oldest to youngest, uh, we have Lance representing our baby boomers, myself, Justin representing millennials, and Caleb representing Gen Z. And the only one that we're missing is Gen X, who would be between Lance and I. Uh, so age-wise, that gives you an idea. Gen Z, you're probably just hearing some about because they're just coming to the point where they're, you know, legal adults and they're entering college, the oldest of them. Uh, so those are people born in 1997 or after. Okay, that's who we're talking about when we're discussing Gen Z. So with that, uh, we already shared some of the statistics, but a very interesting, just a, just a way to set the scene. The article starts by saying, a self-described political conservative, Reagan Larson might seem to be a natural fit for the Republican Party. The 19-year-old college student from South Dakota grew up in a Catholic household that objected to same-sex marriage, and she remains firmly opposed to abortion. But in many ways, that is where the ideological similarities end. Miss Larson, a dual major in biology and Spanish, does not oppose the legalization of marriage equality. She views climate change as undeniable, believes, quote, immigrants make our country richer, end quote, and disagrees with her parents on the need for a border wall. And she is a member of Gen Z. So that kind of sets the stage for what we're discussing today. And I do want to talk about what I think is at the, the crux of all of this, which is ultimately what we're looking at is what's going to happen to Republicans and Democrats? Because the article really focuses on that definitely is going to have a big effect on Republicans because we've watched in the past 20 years how the Republicans, 30 years maybe, how they've really, really gone conservative on social issues where it didn't used to be that way. Even the parties, generally speaking, you might say, didn't do as much in the, the realm of social issues. I mean, yeah, you could go back to civil rights and I, and I guess if you want to bring that into social issues, but it was kind of, it was a little different. Um, so really it's this, it's this interesting era where the Republican party continues to move to the right air quotes there on these social issues while they have a big problem because as the baby boomers begin to, kick the can, um, you know, there's a new voting block. There's a new boss in town. And the problem that they're facing is that they're going to, you're going to have this massive Democratic Party if the Republicans don't change. And the Democrats will probably end up splitting because 
there it won't be a one size fits all. What will happen is the millennials will wake up and Gen Z will wake up and say, oh, my gosh, we've got, you know, we have socialists and libertarians in the same party and that just ain't going to cut it. Um, and then so, you know, you'll have the destruction of the Democratic Party as we know it and the just outright failure of the Republican Party if they don't evolve. So assuming they evolve, that's what we're looking at today, which is kind of what direction are these going? But before we do that, I think it's important to remind people, Lance, uh, what you and I and today, Caleb as well, are trying to accomplish. So, uh, you, you want the, you want the youngin to say it today? Is that? That's fine. I mean, let people hear his voice. Okay. They wow. hear my voice every day. Okay. I, I, I feel honored, actually. Uh, <laughs> so what is, what is True Chat's mission? True Chat's mission is to educate people by providing honest, open, and respectful conversations. That was excellent. Uh, spot on. And if people have ethical concerns, Lance, uh, what's the best way for them to get in touch with us? Um, they need to get a hold of us at, uh, ethics at true chat. And, uh, so we, they send an email, right? Yeah. Ethics at true chat dot org. Yep. Is that what it is? An email? Yes. Okay. (laughs) We'll keep going over it. We'll get there eventually, right? You know what email is, Lance? Yeah. Uh, I do. He doesn't like to check it though. I I, I know that you shouldn't write anything that you don't want to say to people on it because <laughs> Ooh. it lasts forever. Because they can keep it. So I usually and big, big brothers watching. So big I usually watching. try not to use it and say whatever I want to say to people face to face. Yeah. Because then you have plausible deniability. So let's talk about um how this is going to alter the Republicans and Democrats moving forward. I'll I'll give you to my my initial thought and then we'll let Caleb say his bit first. And that means you got to be Caleb. Caleb. <laughs> that means <laughs> that means you have to be careful, Caleb, um, because, you know, we're letting Lance go last. So he's going to get to hear everything first and take all that in. Oh, boy. <laughs> so the thought here is that because we're, we're going with the assumption, right, that generally there's not going to be some monumental economic change that equals a lot more money for millennials in the near future. Okay. That's what we're operating on. Obviously, if that happens, that changes things significantly. But for the purpose of this, that's what we're looking at. So things stay about like they are. So I'd imagine that as the millennials continue to age, you have generally a, you know, we really don't, we want everybody to just be able to do their own thing. So we don't really care what that is, socially speaking, you know, it's do your thing. Um, but they are looking for purpose. And so they're going to continue to want a government that provides for them without bothering them, if that makes sense. In other words, they don't want a government that's up in their business as far as privacy goes, because they are getting a taste of an ever connected world where there's less privacy. So they don't want to give up more of that, but they do want a government that is going to better take care of what they see is probably little to no chance at a real retirement or at least not the same kind of retirement that Xers, baby boomers and beyond had seen. So, and then on the, then on the other side of things, so the GOP probably moves more toward the economically conservative while maintaining a mostly do whatever you want kind of attitude, you know? In other words, as long as it's not bothering me, go do whatever you want. You know, I don't care what you do. Just let me do my thing. Um, so a little bit more libertarian, maybe Republicans. And then on the Democratic side, I think you have millennials and Z who are going to push that envelope more toward socialism. Um, you know, more government services, uh, a, a, a more active, Fed that takes on bigger issues, you know, and kind of lays down the law, so to speak. So that's my guess is what you have is they both remain mostly socially liberal while you have the split on the more and on the millennial end, you'll have the split where they hedge more conservative financially and economically. And I think the Z will hedge more toward that Bernie Sanders, you know, socialism economically speaking. So there you have it, Lance. I'm, I go last. Uh, I know. I'm so, just always used to saying your oh, name. I, okay. I'm reminding people who you are. <laughs> Nobody knows who I am. because I'm still taking you know, notes. My so. name's only said once at the beginning of the show, and it's not even me oh. who says it. So they just, who's that guy talking? I got you. But I remind them. See, I say, you know, 
Lance all the time. Okay. But uh, that no, doesn't, I, yeah. I've got my notes so Caleb, taken to, to comment on what you have to Caleb, say. Caleb, what do you think? You, 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 uh, a Bernie bro? Uh, gonna... I, I am not. Okay. Um, but before I go into that, I'd like to clear up with Lance what Justin said earlier about generally the more you work hard, the more money you earn. That's what I was talking about. I'm not doubting that there's, you know, a dishwasher that makes awful money, but but you know, doesn't work hard. I'm not saying that there mm. aren't those kind of people. I was just speaking generally. If you work hard, you you earn more money. That's you, what I was. That's you what might I was, I you was might general. bring home. The point is, you might bring. You know, if you're willing you to work, to you don't need more. If you're right. if well, you're willing yeah. to work eighty hours a week, you will inevitably bring home. You know, more dollars. You could count more dollars. The point that. Lance and I have tried to convey to people as we've learned it because we really have kind of dug into this and discovered it over the past two years or so is that those dollars don't come close to, you know, like Lance said, on on their best day, they're about 60 percent the value of Lance's dollars. And on their bad days, they're 40 percent of the value of Lance's dollars. So even if you're, even if you are working hard and more money comes through the door, that money still, even if you have more of it still doesn't equal proportionally the same amount that it did for somebody like Lance. And it's not because of inflation. It's because your wages aren't worth as much. What do you think about the idea that as, as time goes on, you'll have, because of because of the way millennials and Gen Z have grown up, the, the eras they're growing up in, you will have almost, I would imagine, generationally, the new Republicans will be look a little bit more like libertarians in the sense that they probably won't really care what – millennials probably won't care too much what people do. You know, in other words, live right. your life, love who you love, do your thing, you know, whatever that is. We don't care. Do what makes you happy. But they will, millennials will hedge toward the conservative side financially and economically because we were all old enough to very distinctly remember the financial crisis and the, the return of what that meant. While you'll have Gen Z mostly, again, a majority of them hedging more toward the new Democrats, which will be primarily more socialist. Uh, in the idea that, you know, again, socially speaking, they'll be very liberal, just like their counterparts, the millennials. But economically, they're going to hedge more toward the government should do more for me. Things like, okay, you know, the government okay. should pay for my college. The government should pay for my health care. Right. That's what I'm okay, getting. I, I get you. Um, Based on your friends, people you know, people your age, do you think that generally speaking, that is accurate? Yeah, yeah, uh, I do. Especially when you look at um, the world that these Gen Z, that Gen Z and this new unknown uh, name are growing up in. I mean, when when you were, I would assume when Lance was growing up, that you know there weren't as many openly transgender people or as many open members of mm. the LGBT community. Probably not. <laughs> um, from what I've learned doing Greece, the fifties were. The were a Republican era, and we're just about to go into the progressive area, which is the make love, not war Vietnam era. So you can see now that Gen Z is growing up in a more liberal area or a liberal era, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they if they start leaning to more liberal ideas when it comes to econ with when it comes to the economy and social issues. Um, OK, I get that. What do you think, yeah, Lance? That. Your turn. You got your notes. I tried to give you as much time as I could there, Lance. No, no, no. You're fine. If you have anything else to say, please, please go no, ahead. That, if that's you, that's the if gist. You, if of you it, think really. of something else, um, he thinks it's fair. Yeah, it's what just, I said. It's just all about, about the world you grow up in, and right now that world for Gen Zs is more liberal. I want to get away from the term liberal and conservative. I know because people that, have a lot they, of, they yeah. automatically think certain things. I think people are more open to social change. Now that's a better and the term younger for it. younger people, people younger than my generation are more open to social change than people in my generation. Now, me personally, 
I think I'm more, I'm one of the more open people towards that right. because I've had some conversations with people, um, about family members and friends that I have. And they're like, well, I just don't understand that. I don't understand how you can be that way or, you know, how you can be transgender or what does this mean? Or what does it mean to be, you know, uh, well, is that like being bisexual or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like, yeah, and I'm explaining it to them. So it's like, I, I'm explaining stuff to people, my generation. Now, am I as knowledgeable as you or my daughters on those issues? No way. Right. Because you guys are the ones that are teaching me, but I'm more open than my generation. And on the average, yeah. Uh, yes. Than the average person, you know, the, the, the normal, um, quote, whatever normal is. So, but I think as we get, as we're in this, we're seeing people that are, are more open to letting people live their life. However, that's why you're seeing such a backlash by, for lack of a better term, the Trumpites towards this, because to them, it's wrecking everything that they grew up with and they see everything slipping away from them. Before, when I grew up, if you were white, things were pretty secure for you. You were going to go get, going to go to college or get that factory job that today the equivalent would be paying $25, $30 an hour and you could go buy a home and you could have a spouse and you could raise two kids and you could afford to go to Disney World or to Myrtle Beach or wherever for your two weeks vacation because of the money you were going to make. Well, that's gone and I'm not sure it's going to come back. So that's the, that's what my generation grew up with. Now you have people out there where there aren't those kinds of jobs available anymore. You see people of, of color finally being able to push into the mainstream a little bit and gain, and I will say some equality because I still think we have a long way to go in this nation and it's a sad report that it's that way. And so people who still want to hold on to those old school beliefs, you know, the baby boomer beliefs are really having trouble with the changes that are going on. I think these changes are good, but I think there's a a little bit of problem here in that the Gen Zers are becoming wanting to rely on others and blaming others, blaming others for their issues. Because as part of of the baby boom generation, If you have a problem, it's yours to work out. You solve it. You find a way to solve it. You don't blame others. And the limited contact I have with Gen Zers through my coaching and through my daughters, one teaching at the college level and one teaching in in the high school level, um, those that generation wants to blame everybody else for their problems. They're being they're being bullied. They they and we've talked on this show before. I think it's my generation hasn't given them the tools. We haven't made them grow up and tough, tough some things out. We've tried to protect them from all the things that bothered us. But yeah, I, I think we're going to be a country, unfortunately, that wants to depend, people who want to depend on the government to take care of them. But I think it's a good thing that we're going to be more open to people living life the way they want to and to find their own happiness. The baby boomers, you know, ultimately, they they had all that activism in the Vietnam War and they were about like Caleb was talking about the the you know make love not war kind of thing the peace thing and i so much of and that and protesting for student rights yes and and all, we had all kinds of things we protested a lot of things nuclear weapons nuclear waste nuclear power yep. you know we were the environmentalist yeah you know we were earth day so it was more than just the Vietnam War and then it was, but we had power from the Vietnam War, thought we did. We Then we thought, well, hey, there are other issues, mm-hmm. social issues that we could get behind. The baby boomers tested the waters of activism. I, I think they, they did. And they, and, and because they're the parents of millennials, I think the difference is that the dream that they were sold, baby boomers, that is, was achievable. So as they got older and they got into these jobs, they realized, you know, if I keep my nose down and I, and I generally behave and I put in the work, I can be happy. You know, I can't, if I mess with that activism stuff and I keep doing that, then I'm not going to get what I want because it, the business landscape was not at a point where there was enough 
pressure to move in that direction. And so what I'm getting at is I think you're right about Caleb that, you know, the reason that Gen Z and particularly the millennials have so much in common with the baby boomers, even if they don't realize it, is because the millennials are just the new iteration of that because they're literally the children of baby boomers. They, they're just, they've just made it the main thing. They've demanded, you know, in, in the landscape we're in that companies start to pay attention to these things, that they live a life where they work a job that they find some purpose in. And part of the reason they're able to do that and that they are doing that is because the dream that they thought they could have, that their parents got and that they thought their kids could have, they're realizing they can't. So they're looking to fill that with something different. And that's where that other side, you know, they have these two sides. They had this activism side and they had this, you know, go to work, work hard, get it done side. And that go to work, get it done side was not proving very fruitful. So it's, in other words, by nature, just like if you have two siblings who are very close in age, usually they become very opposite of each other. And it's not... It's by necessity that they do that because they have to find their own space. And I think that's, that's why you see what you're talking about with the millennials, because they are that literally the DNA of the baby boomers. Just it manifested differently because of when they, but the economic outlook and the economic situation in the country doesn't let them live like their parents lived. Right. Right. And that, and that's where you could tie the wages, the wage difference and, um, hard working doesn't necessarily mean big money earner. Um, that's where you could tie that to is I'm doing what my parents did. I'm not getting paid what my parents or the equivalent of what my parents did. There's a lot of ways that new people can tune in. So if one of our listeners wants to go tell somebody to check out the state of us, where can they tell them to find us? Stitcher, Spotify, um, Apple Podcast, and anywhere else fine podcasts are found. Absolutely. And of course, you can connect with us and let us know your thoughts at TrueChat.org, TrueChat.org on Facebook, Twitter, and more. So please do reach out and connect. We'd be interested to hear from you and what you've got to say. For the State of Us on True Chat in Urbana, I'm Justin T. Weller. And I'm Lance Jackson. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time on The State of Us. Be the change. <laughs>